Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Pastor Tony Burke Brown coming with our word today. We are going right into our spiritual fitness. We are continuing our study on Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. And that chapter just so happens to be about the word of God. Uh, in various verses, it's called precepts, commandments, the truth, the word. Um, there's several different words that are used for the word, but it's all about the word, the entire chapter, and it's a prayer, and it's talking to God, and it's talking about the importance of the word, and the hunger for the word, and what the word does, and you know, the benefits of the word, and so we are in the midst of this, we have already discussed the fact that it is split up into 22 stanzas, or 22 sections, each having eight verses, and we've been going through each of those eight verses, each of those eight verses starts off with a word that is actually one of the Hebrew alphabet. And so we are today looking at the ninth section or the ninth stanza. And we are looking at um, beginning in verse 65. And that letter is Tet. And so that is where we're beginning today. And we're going to look at verses 65 through 72. And I just want to remind you, that this is all about your spiritual fitness. And so you write down these verses of scripture, you go back, you study, you meditate, and you apply this word to your life. It's all about spiritual growth so that we can grow, change, and progress and be impacted by the word and impact the world. Don't forget underneath this YouTube video as well, there's information about our prayer Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's a link for the sit-up e-booklet if you need some help with your spiritual regimen workout plan. But remember, this sit-ups is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture it's all about the word and prayer word and prayer word and prayer it strengthens us increases our faith it's our, our, our weapons of of mass destruction to stand against the wiles of the devil to grow to be able to walk after the spirit to be able to become all that god has purposed us to be to bring glory to his name so again we are in psalm 119 and we are beginning in verse 65 and that letter for today that begins this ninth poem portion or section or stanza of this prayer is tet and we are beginning in verse 65 and i'm going to read it in the king james and i'm going to go back and we're going to go through it so in verse 65 it says thou has dealt well with thy servant o lord according unto thy word teach me good judgment and knowledge for i have believed thy commandments before i was afflicted i went astray but now have I kept thy word? Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Now, this section right here, I really am focused on the fact that twice the word affliction is used in here, or afflicted and affliction, I'm sorry, afflicted is used twice in here. And this is why I want to look at this, because, okay, we, we remember that most of these verses in this whole chapter of 176 verses uses a word that means the word. And so we know the chapter is about the word, but it's also telling us the benefits of it. But even here, it tells us how we can learn to grow in this word, to be afflicted. We're talking about suffering. We're talking about sorrow. We're talking about trouble. We're talking about trials, things that we go through where we say we're going through affliction. We've been afflicted, um, opposition, persecution, um, you know, enemies coming against us, attacks against us, storms that we have to go through, affliction, trials, trouble, right? And nobody likes trouble and trials, but there's a benefit to it. What is the benefit? As we go through these verses, we see that the benefit of being afflicted oftentimes makes us seek God. It makes us seek his word. It makes us learn how to apply the word, how to walk in the word, how to walk by faith, how to trust him more. And so when we're looking in these verses of scripture, I want to look in the um, NLT. And that's the New Living Translation, just to break down um, some of the 
verses here. And again, we're in verses 65 through 72. And this is the New Living Translation. It says, you've done many good things for me, Lord, just as you promised. This is the faithfulness of God. When, when God promises something, when he says something, he cannot lie. He does what he says he's going to do. And verse 66, I believe in your commandments. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. Again, this is the faith that we have, that we believe God's word is real, that is true, that is beneficial, that it causes us to be fruitful, it increases our faith. And he teaches us, he gives us his Holy Spirit as his teacher. He opens up our understanding. And when we want knowledge and wisdom, we seek God. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask God, right? And so it says, teach me good judgment and knowledge. In verse 67, it says, I used to wander off until you disciplined me. But now I closely follow your word. Now think about that. I used to wander off until you disciplined me. I used to, I used to, um, you know, do my own thing. I used to go my own way. But the thing is, is that the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 about how God disciplines those that belong to him, right? Those that belong to God, he, um, he disciplines, he chastens. And it says, you know, not to despise the chastening because if he doesn't chasten us, if he doesn't discipline us, we don't belong to him. It says we're illegitimate. We are bastards. We don't belong to him. And so we need to understand that when God loves us and he's adopted us and chosen us, he allows us to go through certain things. He allows us to grow in his word. He allows us, you know, uh, in the in the King James, what that verse said was before I was afflicted, I went before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before, you know, God allows us to go through some tests, some trials, some tribulations. Because otherwise, we just do what we want to do. And it seems that there's no consequences. But there are consequences. And God allows us to go through certain things so we can grow. So we can learn how to apply his word. If you want to grow in faith, you got to learn how to wait for some things. Go through some things. If you need to grow in patience, you got to learn how to trust God. And not try to step ahead of him. And be patient patient with other people when they're coming against you, when they don't understand, when they don't seem to, you know, receive uh, the, the, the word even when you're ministering to them. You've got to learn how to operate in patience, how to operate in faith, how to operate in love, how to operate in forgiveness. And so that means that some things are going to come against you. You're going to be afflicted. You're going to go through some trials so you can grow, so you can change, so you can, you know, progress. That's what the sit-ups is all about, getting this word in us. But we have to have situations where we're actually applying the word so that the word is in action. The word is what changes us and cleanses us and, 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 and causes us to be transformed. So it says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I had trouble, I was going my own way. Before I went through that, I was wandering around. But now I keep your word. And so then um, in verse 68 in the NLT, excuse me, it says, you are good and do only good. Teach me your degrees, decrees. And so that's another word for word. Again, we got commands, we got decrees, we got, you know, uh, commands, we got, uh, it, instructions. And so now it's saying you are good and do only good. This is acknowledging God's goodness that what he has for us, right, is for us. What he has for us is perfecting us. What he has for us is cleansing us. What he has for us is conforming us into the image of his son. It's his word. It's his instruction, his decrees. It's his truth. And so when we acknowledge his goodness, that he's not going to harm us, that he knows the thoughts that he has towards us, that he's perfecting that which concerns us, that he's working things together for our good, right? According to Romans 8 and 28, according to his word, we have to trust God that he is perfecting the things that concern us. In verse 69 in the NLT, it says, arrogant people smear me with lies, but in truth, I obey your commandments 
with all my heart. So again, it doesn't matter who's coming against us. It doesn't matter the trials, the affliction, the trouble, the storms. It's a commitment to stay in the word because the word is pruning us, purging us, cleansing us, purifying us, making us whole, renewing our minds, transforming our life. This is the change. This is the progression. This is how we are transformed by the renewing of our mind is the word. We're not looking at the people. We're not listening to the lies. We're not focused on those opposing us. We're not getting angry. We're not trying to get revenge. We're not seeking, um, you know, vengeance. But what we are doing is seeking God in the midst of the trial. What are you teaching me in here? What am I learning from this? How am I going to grow from this? How am I going to be, you know, become more like Christ through this situation, through this circumstance? What are you trying to take out of me? What are you trying to get rid of me? Is it bitterness? Is it anger? Is it arrogancy? Is it pride? Is it, you know, is it laziness? What is it? That you are purging on the inside of me. In verse 70 in the NLT, their hearts are dull and stupid. <laughs> but I delight in your instructions. Again, it's not about trying to pay people back. It's not about trying to get on their level. It's about seeking God, delighting in his word. So while they're, you know, maybe opposing us, maybe the enemy is using situations or people against us. Maybe God is allowing some things so that we can be purged and we can be purified and we can bear fruit. And in the midst of it, all we're doing is delighting in his word, seeking his word, hungering and thirsting after his word so that we're growing through it and not just going through it. And verse 71 says, my suffering was good for me. You know, the King James says, King James says it was good that I was afflicted. The NLT says my suffering was good for me. For it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. So in the midst of your trials, you know, when we want to break down, when we want to quit, we want to give up. We, we want to know why. But the thing is, is that God is teaching us something in the midst of it. In the midst of it, if we're going through it properly, if we're going through it in faith, then we're going to the word and we're in prayer and we're before God and we're applying that word and we're walking in it. When people are opposing you, you go to the word that tells you, love your enemies, you know, bless those that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for those that despitefully use and persecute you, overcome evil with good. And as you're working the word, you're growing, you're changing, you're being purified and cleansed and you are growing and being conformed to the image of God's son. So you're ready for the next test, the next trial. You're ready to stand against the wiles of the devil. And, and when that other attack comes, when you have to fight in that spiritual battle for your family, for your loved ones, for yourself, for your community, because you are growing, it's good that I was afflicted. My suffering was good for me because it caused me to pay attention to your word because sometimes people can get comfortable because everything seems to be going smoothly. It's going okay. You've been in the word. You've been praying. You've been going to church. You've been connected. You were serving. You were doing. But then everything got kind of comfortable. Nothing was really going on. So you read a little bit less. You pray a little bit less. You, you begin to conform to some things around you. Begin to have some ungodly conversation. Begin to have some ungodly connections and begin to get comfortable and complacent. And so what it does is it can cause, um, it can cause us to become complacent and lazy. But then it tells us in verse 72, your instructions are more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver. When we see the word of God is valuable, it's life changing. As perfecting us, we begin to hunger and thirst and seek after it. And so this section here, I want you to find scriptures about afflictions and trials and storms and temptation and see how God perfects us in it, including in James chapter one. When we look in James chapter one and tells us to count it all joy when we face that verse temptation. Forgive me, but if you continue in James chapter one, you see that the word tells us, count it all joy when we face that verse. Temptation is the trine of our faith, and the trine of our faith works patience. This is what makes us complete and entire, lacking nothing. And so we want to continue to meditate on this section so that we can see that the things that we go through have purpose. God allows certain things to happen so that we can grow. So I want you to find some verses of scripture, meditate on them, and then begin to look at some of the things that have taken place in your life and how you may have grown in them, how you have grown closer to God. 
God are grown in faith, are grown in his word. And so this is all about spiritual growth and change. And so we're going to close out in prayer, share this word with somebody who may benefit from it, meditate on that this is an excellent chapter to meditate on. And so we're going to close out. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell if you no want notifications when I upload videos. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice in your goodness. We bless your name. We honor you. You are the great I am. You are the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, mighty God, El Shaddai, Adonai. And so, Father, we just come and we ask that you help us to grow through every situation and every circumstance, that we seek you and acknowledge you, that you would direct our path, that you are purging and pruning, removing things from us that are unwanted elements, that we can bear more fruit, that we can produce fruit, that we can grow in spiritual fruit, that we can become all that you purpose us to be. So we thank you for spiritual growth through affliction, through your word, by your spirit. We thank you for continuing the good work you begin in us until Christ Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, God, for who you are, all that you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hey, everybody, this is Tony Brooke Brown, the owner and designer of Christian Rap. I want you to check out our prayer cloths. You know there's power in the word and power in prayer. When you put them together, you have a scripture confession prayer cloth. The prices have gone down because I'm zigzagging the edges instead of sewing them. Check them out on Christian Rap. We are word-related accessories and products, a Christian lifestyle brand.